Next we have this little window here which doesn't have a fancy name, but it is our grid and nudge values. Um, <clears throat> the grid value, super important, super important. Nudge value, pretty important. I'm going to go ahead and say less so. Um, let's start with turning the grid on and off, on and off. Um, so I've mentioned the grid, I've mentioned grid values before. We haven't even made any music. Um, and they're the lines, essentially. I mentioned 1-1, one 1-2, slash 2, slash 3, slash 4 are each beats. When you look at the grid, you can start to see that there are kind of bolded blue lines. Those indicate the downbeat or when the beat occurs. You don't really see the first one very well, but that's beat one. This is beat two, beat three, and beat four. In between them, you'll see one, two, three, or one, two, three, four lines each. One, two, three, four, one. And those represent how uh, finitely those measures have been broken up using the grid. Right now the value for the grid, if you click on the note here, the musical note, is 16th notes, which means within your measure of four quarter notes, it's been subdivided up to represent 16th notes within the measure little bit of music here not very much a bar is one two three four one two three four okay if your value is set to a bar you'll only see one line for every four beats change it to half note match you get two lines one and two quarter notes four lines one two three four one two three four eighth notes eight lines one e two wait one e one e two e three e four e that's how i'm going to count it for you anyways channeling my old uh, music lessons 16th notes, which is my default, this is where I start and leave it almost always, 16 lines per measure, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. It's not 1 E, it's 1 and. <laughs> 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Uh, 30 seconds, I'm not going to try and count it, but you get the idea. 32 lines and then 64th, 64 lines per measure. And you can see that that gets to be pretty precise. But, for example, look at where I wanted this vocal to start. Zoom in. It's not on even a 64th note. So, if I were to quiz you right now, what mode, what edit mode did I use to place this clip over here? so that it started right at measure one, beat three, sub beat 907. Of course, that was placed in slip mode because I needed it to start where it needed to start. I couldn't rely on grid values. Now, going back to the fact that I just leave it, generally speaking, at 16th. Um, so, again, just as a clarification, as I'm moving things, in grid mode, I can only move to specific lines, and the, uh, the specificity of those lines, the finite nature, how many of those lines you'll have, is determined by this little note here. You can also 
come in here and, and do it. Now you can also click over here as you saw maybe this is minutes and seconds. I can change the grid values to minutes and seconds but if you're making music it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you don't place a snare drum on second on 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 three seconds or three point one point seven three one you know you play some on beats so generally for making music I leave that as bars and beats now nudge value nudge value is something that again it's a function that's available I don't use it a lot because there's other ways to do it but check this out I'm gonna leave the nudge values as quarter notes and I'm going to leave them in bars and beats as um, a mode of sorts and say I click on this clip which does begin at measure one beat two no subframes or no sub beats and the nudge value is set to quarter notes so let me zoom out so you see quarter notes so the first quarter note back is beat one the next quarter note forward is beat three, and the next quarter note would be beat four. When you highlight a clip, nudging means to move it in set increments. At this, at this point, it, that increment is set to quarter notes um, by pressing a button. So if you use the numeric keypad off to the right on your keyboard, the plus moves it to the right and the minus moves it to the left. Now, great, I wanna move this two measures to the right. So I did that with two uh, hits on the plus sign. But I can also grab it using my grabber tool and move it two clips to the left or two, I should say two beats to the left or two beats to the right. So cool you know, to be able to do. Not necessarily that cool. A little, you know, this is where functionality and kind of using it and coming up with ideas is kind of cool. If you, if you set your nudge to minutes and seconds and then click here again, you have, well, by how much? You know, so a second to the left or a second to the right. isn't that useful either. But if you set it to, you know, 10 milliseconds or a millisecond, and I'm going to zoom in so you can really see this, then you're able to make, you know, fairly small adjustments as needed. But again, you know, that's in grid mode. In slip mode, I can move this thing in, in finer uh, steps than we can get in nudge mode. Um, so remember, there is a relationship between your grid, your nudge, the mode of nudging or grid, whether it's uh, your ruler, essentially, bars and beats or minutes and seconds. Um, and that with nudging especially, you can accomplish much of the same things just using your mouse and being aware of your modes. All right, so that's grid and nudge values and how they relate to editing and moving around your, your clips.